Uh, here I have a TAC A505 DC integrated stereo amp. Um, again, completely unknown condition. This one's got an SDK chip in it. A uh, nice flat transformer. Low profile. And not a lot else in there, really. Uh, looks like, yeah, just VU meters. Uh, looks like we've got our tone controls down there. Fairly small filter capacitors. So I'll start by checking the, um, the fuses in this one. And go from there. So we've got a blown fuse there, and another blown fuse. We'll check our um, bridge rectifier diodes. They all seem to measure okay. Now finding... The next thing to check would be across these filter capacitors, or the B plus of this chip, but unfortunately that's not so easy though, it looks like this does have a removable bottom cover. So, check that. Take that off and see if we can get across the main rails. Now, there we go. Two filter capacitors here. That's yeah, it's probably just the the capacitance. Seems to be charging up. So it's still possible that chip could be faulty. Uh, what have we got? F4 amp fuses. Let's see if these are actually the right fuses in here. Yeah, it's well and truly blown. Yeah, that's an F4 amp. So that's not a good sign. Yeah, they've gone blown fairly hard, not massively, but 4 amp. So you certainly suspect that the STK chip could be faulty. Let's see if I can find a couple of similar rating on this slow blows. amps in there it'll probably blow them again but there is a bit of brownish glue around one of these caps which some of this old electronics had glue that went conductive it had absorbed moisture but I don't think that is the same stuff but anyway we'll plug that in I reckon that's gonna pop the fuses but it's only one way to find out really blown. Uh, we've got a phono light on the front. Speaker A. Volume's down. So the next step will be to connect across these speaker terminals and see if there's any DC voltage there. Uh, usually the chassis should be earth. Might just check all these pins. That looks like there's speaker earth. Yeah, it all seems to be good. Might just put the multimeter probes in the sockets just to be sure. 
8.8 volts, which is fine. There's a little bit on one side, but nothing to be too worried about, I don't think. Oh, what up? Well, best if we turn both speaker switches on. Yeah, zero volts there. Close enough to zero there. Guess I can check the others, but if it's one's good, they should both be good. Okay, well, that's interesting. Just check there's no obvious dry joints on this chip or anything. Oh, looks half decent. A few could do with resoldering, maybe, but. Hmm, yeah, no, that seems to actually probably be safe to hook up to a set of speakers. I've got some audio running here. Uh, auxiliary, I guess. Power still on. Tape off, auxiliary, and we've got some some VU meters running here. That's with no load on it at all. Just double check our outputs for DC. Yeah, it's fine. There's, there's nothing there. So I'll turn the power off and hook up some speakers. That seems to work alright. Another easy one, well, I'm not finding very any exciting faults with these ones. Hmm, not even so much as a scratchy pot on this one. Hmm, interesting. No, it seems to work fine. Try the other inputs. Phono, which I'm just putting a CD in so that'll be distorted. Very much so. But it's got audio there so that should be working. Tuner. And tape play. It's a little scratchy there now. Yeah, pot could do with a little bit of squirt of contact cleaner. Not surprising given the age. seems to work fine so I'll have to find some 4 amp fuses now, if you're not sure if the fuse is going to blow doesn't have to put something a little bit lower value in just so if there is a fault still there it will kill the fuses quickly before it has a chance to do much else just turn the power off and unplug that so I'll remove our 3 amps and put them back in the box I'm not sure if I've got any 4 amp quick blows Oh, unfortunately all I've got is a couple of 5 amps, which we'll have to do for the moment. I'll have to get my hands on a couple of 4 amps quick blows, which yeah, hardly anything uses quick blow fuses these days, so it's not something I've really got in stock. 
Yeah, F4M, 250 volt. Uh, we'll just go over and check any obvious dry joints in this thing. Yeah, volume control looks good. Always worth checking these switches along the front because they get a bit of vibration from people pushing on them. Definitely this area around here where it's a bit darker. Yeah, didn't switch my soldering iron on. So basically looking for any joints, especially in the hot areas. Any joints where the solder's not shiny anymore, it's a bit sort of crystalline, not you can sort of see a little bit of texture in the surface. Also you start looking for a bit of a ring around the the actual lead. You actually see that it's starting to crack sort of in about halfway between the, the middle and the outer of the solder blob. You'll start seeing a dark ring going around the leads. Uh, these amp chips. Always worth a check, there's a couple there, I can just see them starting to crack, so I'll re-solder those. But other than that, what do we got here? Some connectors. Yeah, filter caps are good, they're another fairly heavy item. Worth a check. Uh, but other than that, brush a bit of dust out of it. I mean, some people would go and check all these capacitors. But I'm not really going to bother doing all that with this one. And bothering to recap it, it's not a particularly great amp. It's they're quite a good solid little unit. But uh, not a 70s collectible amp or anything. So I don't think I'll spend too much time on it. It's just one I picked up $10 or something and thought it'd be an interesting one to try and get going. Uh, the other thing we should really do before I touch anything is just check those filter caps if... If the amp's running, they should have discharged. But if you ever have an amp that isn't running, there's a good chance these caps will still be charged up. And with enough voltage and current, it could be a shock hazard. Or it could just cause damage if you're soldering. And you short something out or something and there's you know 30, 40 volts in there. And potentially a couple of amps or something could damage something. Especially if you like soldering the output chip. You don't want to short one of the high voltage pins to one of the input pins or something, you'll probably damage the chip. That one doesn't look 100%. So yeah, always make sure your caps are discharged. You know, a couple of volts probably isn't going to cause any problems, but if they're still sitting at the full 40 volts, because they've been disconnected from the rest of the circuit or the amp chip isn't running or output transistors it's certainly potential to do some damage to either you or the equipment I think that's the main solder joints that weren't hundred percent yeah they're all looking pretty good now what do those two? They're not a hundred percent, but but not bad either. You know, if you're going to give an amp a full sort of rebuild or service, you'd probably just about solder everything in the output stage here. But but this one, I'll just go over anything that's not a hundred percent. That doesn't look the greatest from the factory, but I don't think it was a problem. But yeah, mainly around the. The areas that are exposed to heat or they have heavy parts on them you know, or again pots switches that sort of thing that get moved around better check it one more time i guess after i put it all together uh, what do i do with the bottom
up until I get some fuses. I think I might even just put the cover back on this one. The cover's not in the best condition. Make myself a note. Four amp S times two that we need for that. So I don't forget that. Yeah, where do I put all the couple screws? Like that. This plug would have had the original molded on one, but they put one of these. I believe they've got a um, yeah suppression, auto iron static suppressor suppressor. So I don't know. These were some sort of. I don't think I've ever seen inside one. They have a capacitor in them supposedly to stop noise coming down the mains line. I think so. I might get rid of that, and it's not very well attached by the feel of it. Yeah, here we go. Oh, clips all. Oh, it's clips all, isn't it? Yeah, clips all. I don't know if that's the type number. 423 plug. Yep, yeah, number 423 plug. So it doesn't really have any. Pretty dodgy. It's made for a, a round cable, has no. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Total trash, really. It doesn't have anything to clamp the cord so if you pulled on that it just would have come out anyway so I think we'll get rid of that bit of a novelty in itself and hopefully I've still got some of the could change the whole cord or I should have a three pin plug with the with the, the bit the wrap around bits to hold the cable and with a, a narrow back on it So you can use this type, it's a Clipsal, it's got a number on it, the 439, so these are made of it, I'll just get rid of that fresh and start pretty much again. So I'll always put the cover on first, and should be about there somewhere. Being very careful not to nick the inner cable. Just cut this outer sheath. That's all good. Hmm, maybe a tad short actually. Yeah, that should be right. I've got it just right. Yeah, nothing I should do. In Australia, the left one here is well, the left top one is the active, which is the brown wire. They might actually be labelled on these. I can't remember. No, it's got a little A there. Should be an N next to this one, maybe not, but the other top one's a neutral. Make sure you do them up nice and tight. Loop around the string thing there. That should come about to there. Mm. Winter is not the best time to do these because it makes the plastic extra hard. And it's just a matter of getting this little sheath over. God, it is stiff, this one.
Uh, pop the bag off again. God, that is a tight one. That's him. Oh, I should really warm this in front of the heater, probably, but anyway. I'll just get on with the screwdriver. And that's all there is to it. Much safer than that other thing. Yeah, it seems to be going well. So I think we'll call that one fixed for now until I get some proper fuses for it. But yeah, that's the old TAC. Quite a good unit, these things. I'm not sure how many watts this would be rated at, probably 20, 30 watts a channel. Uh, probably from somewhere in the 80s. A little bit of a clean up, this should clean up fairly well. The top's got a bit of damage. But uh, these were quite a good amp back in the day when the TAC brand was still a good brand. I assume it'd be made in Japan. Yeah, TAC Corporation made in Japan. Whether you can see that or not. Um, so yeah, quite a good little amp that, but again, not much wrong with it.